Good morning, folks. Everything new under the sun. We were reading today in Revelation chapter 10 about uh, um, a mighty angel and the seven thunders that came down. Uh, and, uh, and it's a mystery as to what the seven thunders are. So we're going to talk about that and uh, see if we can figure out what they are. Is there any interesting information on what they may be? Now this comes out of, uh, again, Revelation 10. And uh, it says, And he had in his hand an, a, a little open book, and, and he set his uh, right foot upon the sea, and his left foot upon the earth. And he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. So that's important, when a lion roareth. Is there examples of a lion roaring in the Bible? And when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And uh, verse 7 here says, But in the days of the voice of the seven angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God shall be finished, finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. So it seems like a wrapping up, um, a grand finale, if you will, uh, where the details of this grand finale are kept hidden. They are kept from us. Um, Daniel was uh, told not to uh, describe what he saw. And uh, it says, And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And, and it says, And I went unto the angel, and he said unto me, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, eat it up, and it shall be made, uh, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be sweet as honey to thy mouth. So that's, that's what's um, being uh, described there. So what are the seven thunders? What what does that mean? Is there any indication of what they may be? Well, let's go to, uh, this is readingacts.com. What are the seven thunders in Revelation 10? Uh, I asked the same question, and there's a bit of speculation. It says, when the mighty angel speaks, his words are like the roar of a lion. And he, ans and he is answered by the seven thunders. The angel speaks. John hears a response from the seven thunders, but he is forbidden. Uh, John, sorry, not Daniel. John uh, hears the response, but he is forbidden to write these words. Why are the words of this mighty, uh, uh, this mighty angel not recorded or the, the thunders? Possibly it means the angel's words were, were unintelligible. Uh, it says, later rabbinic literature interpreted these thunders as the voice of God. So we hear in the Bible about the voice of the lion, uh, and which is, uh, you know, related to the voice of God. The voice was so loud, all the people of the world heard the voice, and God's voice split up into 70 voices, interesting number there, uh, according to the 70 languages of the earth, where there are 70 original languages from which the different dialects have diverged over the last uh, um, many thousands of years since the Tower of Babel. It says, so that each people could hear it in its own tongue. Psalm 29 says, a seven, uh, uh, three to nine is a sevenfold description of the voice of God as thunder. Although the word voice is not there seven times, there is a rabbinic tradition that the voice of God was heard as seen uh, thunders on Mount Sinai. Was heard as uh, thunders on Mount Sinai, rather. Since the line of Judah appears in Revelation 5.5, 5, this article says, perhaps a voice like thunder is drawn from the metaphor of the thunderous voice of a lion. For example, Amos 1.2 begins with the words, The Lord roars from Zion and thunders from Jerusalem. <clears throat> uh, it says, The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The voice of God as thunder is common in other apocalyptic literature. Uh, quote, the one who thunders on high. In Ezra, it says the Lord is like a hung hungry lion who thunders and terrifies everyone. Uh, Ain suggests that the thunder is common metaphor for articulate speech by supernatural beings. So again, uh, an understanding that you know it's a supernatural being, it's, it's speech, it's apocalyptic. Uh, and this is uh, understood it's a, as a metaphor in both Je Jewish and uh, uh, Greek. Um, in Enoch 39, Enoch claims that he has heard the Lord speaking like loud 
thunder. That's from uh, chapter 3 of Enoch. In the mystical visions of uh, 3 Enoch, the writers saw thunders and voices uh, roaring in the midst of flames of fire. So the book of Enoch is a very interesting book. Um, and uh, first Enoch says, <clears throat> In those days my eyes saw the mystery of lightnings. Excuse me. And their judgments. They flash lights for a blessing or a curse, according to the will of the Lord of Spirits. And there I also saw secrets of the thunder, secrets of the thunder, and the secrets of how when it resounds in the heights of heaven, its voice is heard in the earthly dwellings. He showed me whether the sound of the thunder is for peace and blessing or for a curse, according to the word of the Lord of Spirits. So thunder has something to do spiritually for peace, blessings, or a curse, huh? And uh, after these, after that, it says, all the mystery of the lights and the lightnings were shown to me. They that glow with the light for the blessing and for contentment. Now it's said in apocalyptic scripture um, that there are, are the the people who see uh, these and are are transported. Uh, like John, into the heavenly realm and see these things, hold back mystery. It's kind of a tradition to hold back secrets or mystery, um, possibly because, um, you know, they, they want to answer skeptics if skeptics a ask them something about it. Um, but also um, because there's things there uh, that I have not seen nor ear heard as the Bible describes in heaven. There's things there which we simply can't comprehend. So when John or, or uh, you know, anybody claims to have a revelation or, or has been transported to heaven or, or some spiritual realm, there are simply things there that they cannot describe uh, because God does not allow them to or because they don't have the words or the ideas to describe what they've seen. Uh, and, and that's what heaven will be like. Uh, again, where no eye has seen, no ear has heard the things that God has prepared for us in heaven. So these are the thunders that can't be described and that God will not allow to be described as happening. So the question is, what did the seven thunders say? And, and here's pure speculation. So there, there's a guy, Busset, he, he suggested John was giving, uh, given another series of plague judgments like the seals, trumpets, and bulls, but far more terrifying, it says. Uh, and he was told not to record this series. This is certainly possible, and if so, indicates that there will be more judgments during the tribulation happening than could uh, ex be expected after reading Revelation. Leviticus 26 has four sevenfold plagues as part of curses and blessings in Leviticus. This would mean there were... Uh, there were four sets of seven judgments. One set, uh, was, one was set aside. Caird suggested the reason John is told not to record the content of the visions is because God will cancel these judgments out of His grace and mercy. But Beale points out, seal up does not have the same sense as cancel. So I, I do think you know God has uh, things in store which we simply can't understand. Our horse, he simply doesn't want to tell us. He doesn't want to uh, share all the details for what we may expect because we look at it and we uh, we make this or that assumption about what it is and, and we guess and we try to figure out if it's happening or not happening. And so God holds information back. Uh, we can't handle information and and then there's just some information that God does not want us to have and speculate on um, but there is something being held back here and in Revelation 10 again it does speak about the things of God being finished but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets so is this is this the end of it is this the, really the grand finale the fireworks special if you will where God finalizes everything and finally uh, resets uh, things. So that could very well be the case, uh, and uh, we, will, we won't know until these things occur, and hopefully we'll be, uh, as Chuck Misler says, uh, hopefully we'll be in the mezzanine watching from above, seeing all the shock and awe that's happening, the glory of God and the, and the wrath and the strength and the power of God being poured out um, to 
solve and bring justice to the earth, to solve the problem of sin in the earth, and to uh, uh, make it a new world for the millennial reign of Christ. So I don't know. You let me know what you think the seven thunders are in the book of Revelation. Let me know what you think they could be, and uh, we can have a discussion about it in the comments. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll leave it there. We'll see you in the next video.